70 million years ago, the area was a hot, lush flood plain. I've come here to meet fossil hunter Doug Lawson. And here, Doug made one of the most remarkable discoveries in the history of pterosaur research. On the side of the sandstone hill was this one isolated bone. Uh, and you might have thought, well, it's just another dinosaur, except the material of this animal was very thin, very light individual. And um, it was uh, difficult because actually if you thought it was a pterosaur then the bone that you were going to be comparing it to was usually the size of of a grain of rice and this this bone was uh, bigger than a grapefruit and uh, it was covered with sandstone so it was very difficult to see what it was but i finally figured out that it was the wrist uh, of, of the animal and pterosaur wrists are unique so given that when we had these other pieces of bone that we had discovered at the location, you come to understand how big that was. This is just the upper arm bone of the specimen. This? Yeah, yeah. And looking at this, you realize, wow, we have something that's dinosaur-sized, but it's a pterosaur. Now, you could not have prevented yourself from saying, how big is this? Oh, well, yeah, right. Then you and say, so how, wow, you know, okay, we've... Uh, so based on what we had, um, the estimate was about 50 feet. Wingspan? Yeah, 50-foot wingspan. I estimate. mean, that, that is gigantic. Isn't oh, it? yeah, definitely. Yeah. Mind-blowing. And I mean, did people believe you? Well, there was some question. No other pterosaur was even half the size of this one. And uh, the fact that something so large th that could fly, there was a, almost an aerodynamic question of whether this could even be. It was a truly astounding discovery. His creature had wings that were so large they could easily have spanned the width of this building. It lived 70 million years ago during the Cretaceous period. It stood 20 feet high, so tall it could look a giraffe in the eye. This was Quetzalcoatlus, named after the serpent god of the Aztecs. It was probably a scavenger, using its long neck to probe deep into the carcasses of dead dinosaurs. animal foolish enough to get in its way was likely to meet a grisly end. But how did the giant Quetzalcoatlus get off the ground? The answer may be found inside the pterosaur arm bones. There are two things you have to get right if an animal the size of a giraffe, like Quetzalcoatlus, 
is to get into the air. Weight and power. And a close examination of the bones show how the pterosaurs did that. A scan of the arm bone of Quetzalcoatlus shows that, just like those of other pterosaurs, it was hollow. This animal was very lightweight. It may have been the size of a giraffe, but it was no heavier than two human beings. But at the very top of the arm, the bone is very different. All these supporting struts line up in one direction. And that gives us a clue as to how the animal got airborne. The upper arms were reinforced so that they could withstand a sudden burst of great power without breaking. The animal used all four of its limbs as a giant catapult to launch its body skyward at 35 miles an hour. It used a quadrupedal launch. But how did it actually fly? There is a practical way of finding out. A modern glider is about the same size as that giant pterosaur. It too has long slender wings and it too is extremely light. This flying machine is so lightweight, it doesn't even need an engine. All it requires is a tow to get it into the air. This is the nearest I will ever get to experiencing the magic of Quetzalcoatlus in flight. Giant wingspan, this was the largest animal ever to fly. Quetzalcoatlus kept its wing beats to a minimum. It was a living glider. and it had much more detailed control than even the most advanced and sophisticated of modern aircraft.